Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Ida Kabir, um, sacrifice key to nation building, says Tinumbu. President not to blame for economic crisis. CBN keeps $2.9 billion deposit in special accounts to stabilize Forex market. Edo 2024, Shebu declares support for APC candidate Okwebulu and confusion over tenure of the Rivers Council chairman. Okay, which story? Okay, I have the major headline. So yesterday, um, the president, um, Bola Metinumbu, along with um, the um, SGF, that's um, Bajabia Mila, um, political um, members, okay. associates, the Obanikuru, and all of them prayed together at the Dodan Barracks where the Lagos um, Island usually observe the um, Eid festival led by the chief imam of Lagos, Abunola. And he had um, some things to say to Nigerians. He says, since, you know, as the president was saying that uh, the chief imam has just mentioned that this is a season of sacrifice. Mm. The president then goes on to, you know, advise that um, Nigerians should you know, follow the part of sacrifice. He says sacrifice is required of a good citizen. Citizenship comes with responsibility. And as citizens, what we do need is to be committed members of our society. And yes, that is sacrifice. Loving your country, loving your neighbors, sharing what you have with each other, and to always be thankful to Almighty Allah. The chief imam also used the opportunity to stress the virtues of credible leaders who serve the uh, nation and urge leaders to emulate the virtues of such credible leaders and serve the country faithfully. He also urged Nigerians to pray that God should grant the president strength and wisdom to deliver on his vision for a better, prosperous nation. And also, um, in attendance was the NSA, uh, um, the secretary to the president, uh, Akim Uriokola, and all of them yesterday. Okay, I have a special account with $2.9 billion deposit has been created by the CBN to stabilize the foreign exchange market. Um, CBN says that this special account uh, it's called the Gazelle Funding Account, and um, they made this known during the FAC meeting. That's the Federal Federation Account Allocation Committee meeting. Um, so the way they describe it, they said um, the NMPCL, they have, the, they have proceeds from production sharing contact tax and royalty sales, which they will transfer to the Gazelle funding account. So the federal government secured a $3.3 billion loan from Afri Exim Bank to stabilize the, that's where they got it from, Afri Exim Bank to stabilize the Forex market. Uh, so the structure of the loan requires NMPCL to deposit PSC royalty and tax proceeds into the Gazelle funding account. From these deposits, 90% will be released to NMPCL and CBN, while 10% will go towards repaying the loan. So. Um, from the way it was explained, it seems that the members of FAC subcommittee, uh, they said they recognize the potential benefits of this special funding for forex stability. But some representatives from states and local governments said that they were concerned about the transparency of the process because they were not even aware that there was such an account until you know the time of the meeting. And so the takeaway from it was that um, NMPCL needs to organize a stakeholders uh, meeting so that um, all relevant parties are informed, you know, of the due process and of all that is required um, for the project Gazelle funding and also to explain the purpose, structure and repayment plan for the loan. All right. Okay, so I have the story from um, Nima's state of origin, ex <laughs> deputy governor of Edo State, Comrade Philip um, Shaibu. He said he will support the governorship candidate of the all Progress, um, progressive Congress, that's APC in Edo State, for the September 21st election. He described him as one of the two homeboys among the 16 standard bearers. He said the other homeboy was the governorship candidate of Labour Party, Olumide Apata, a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, stressing that the two homeboys possess the qualities to move Edo forward, devoid of deceit and propaganda. Mm -hmm. Shaibu, a former member of the House of Representatives, spoke with reporters yesterday at the St. Paul's Church. He was tr he's trying to say that it's better we take the APC candidates than the PDP, because he said the PDP in Edo, Dr. Aswa Ugodo, as a product of, is coming as a product of Godfatherism, which according to him, a two-term governor of Edo, Senator Adams Oshomole, fought against, fought against. He, said, he further said, I will support a homeboy. I came in to contest to be the governor of Edo State because I needed governance 
to return to a homeboy. Somebody who understands our plight, somebody who understands what the people are feeling. Even the United Nations talks about the needs assessment. Okay, so the um, special advisor to the president on um, information and strategy, Mr. Bayo Anonuka, has responded to a New York Times report um, that condemned and said that the economic woes are the fault of the present um, government's policies. He said that, um, that he responded saying that their, their perspective was jaundiced and that this was, um, was a, a situation that was inherited um, by the previous administrations by, this current, by the current one. The, the report was given by Ruth McLean and um, Ismail Uwell. He said their feature story it says Nigeria confronts its worst economic crisis in a generation. And they said that was um, not the full truth. The government statement said that um, he, they refused to uh, mention the hardworking policies that had, um, had to be um, implemented. He said that uh, because of the misleading slant of the report, we need to clear up some misconceptions. Most significant was the report that it painted the dare experience of some Nigerians. The report based on several interviews is best jaundiced, all gloom and doom. It's never mentioned the positive aspects in the same economy as well as the um, ameliorative policies being implemented, which is the one of which was the subsidy, subsidy removal that was very required if not our country would have gone into a serious abyss like Venezuela and Zimbabwe. Mm. Moving on now to the punch, Salah celebration. Tinubu Buhari Sultan Khan prefers solutions to hardship. 17 billion naira debt, GT Bank drags 60 bank chiefs to court. Food, in, uh, food inflation soars by 61% in one year, is NBS. Minimum wage, FG pushes 62,000 naira paid despite Labour's opposition. Crude supply, modular refineries back Dangote seek Tinubu's intervention. Cholera Lagos opens emergency center. UNICEF urges water provision. Police probe death of U.S.-based businessman in Lagos Hotel. And two fallen trucks worsen gridlock on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Okay, which story? I have the uh, food inflation story. So according to an analysis of the latest consumer price index and the inflation report by the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigerians' food inflation rose to 40.66 percent this uh, past month, May. And this represents 61% uh, from uh, the cost of food rose by 61% from 25 to 25% um, in June 2023, and now May 2024 it is 40.66%. The gap is very wide. Of course, the uh, NBC disclosed the headline inflation moved from 0.26% um, in April by 33. It was 33.95 in April. Now we are dealing with 40.66% in May. And they said that most, uh, uh, the, the most contributors in foods are Semovita, Oat Flake, Yam Flour, pre-packages, that's the prepared uh, Yam Pounder, okay. curry, beans, and these are, uh, which are under bread and cereal class. The Irish potatoes, Yam, water Yam, under potatoes, Yam, and other tuba class contributed to the year-on-year -year increase in food inflation. Other contributors are palm oil, vegetable oil, uh, stock fish. You know, these are, ba these are the basics. Basic, yeah. As you know, people buy, so it's, it's reflective of what we're dealing with. All right, let's go, a short, let's go on a short break now. We'll come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.